Hi, I'm Tegan Graham, a.k.a. The Better Graham, and this is The Do You Football Show. Really? I needed to fucking jump in on something <laughs> quick, man. She was like, we're going right into the show. I mean, I get it. She's producing, and that's what she's supposed yeah. to be doing, but it was like, fuck me. She came right at it. You I know. know. A little much. <sighs> Are you yeah, okay ready, after yeah. yesterday? Hey, we, we survived. We All right, survived, good. All right, know? are you ready to do this, though? You know what's great? Huh? No motherfucking Malort. I don't care if we didn't play. It still counts. Let's start the show. Born in the land of Bowie, Maryland. Bred to be a fan of fucking Everton. Put you in the eye and drink your rye. Sam Houston. Sam Houston? Arsenal fans have another Sam. Ray J.A. the fucking Gooner Graham. Snow the Malort. Looks great in shorts. Sam Grammy. Sam Graham. Fucking United! Fucking United! Hello and welcome to the DU Football Show, a completely biased recap of the English Premier League and the FA Cup is told by two common American schmucks. I am your host, Sam Houston, and across the way from me, with the meanest, maddest, dankest memes, my co-host, Mr. Samuel Graham. How you doing, Mr. Graham? Doing very well, thank you. You know, just sharing my life away. That's a, that's a little little foreshadowing, <laughs> a little foreshadowing. A little, ha- little habanero pepper for later. <laughs> A little spicy. Oh, a little spiciness, Mel. Definitely Mel. some spiciness. Mel's, Mel's a little spicy. Mom's a little pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> We're recording at the DU Public House just outside the nation's capital. You can check us out wherever you get your po- podcasts. And of course, streaming live right now, wherever you like to get your streaming services, we are available on every single Monday night. Yep. Should you want to chat with us, there are as many ways that you can. Mr. Graham. Tell the good people how they can get in touch. Absolutely. It's at DU Football Show on all the social media and DU Football Show at uh, gmail.com to get in touch via uh, email. And uh, make sure you join the closed group, Drunker United FC. Uh, it's where most of the hashtag bans happen. Uh, and it's a ton of fun in there on uh, about 99.9% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, as long as, as long as it's not a dank meme that upsets people. Taylor's already got one up. Uh, <laughs> even with the freebies, longtime Patreon subscribers, when infamous Charbelly Ru- uh, Ruse paid content being released for free. First time? <laughs> <laughs> not wrong. Not wrong he, at he all. Was, he was so, like, getting that out fast. Like, I think he messed up a little on the typing, but <laughs> the thing's still the same. <laughs> Sam and myself both work in the wine and spirit industry and both have a deep, passionate love for all things distilled spirits. So as the red-blooded Americans we are, we vow to have a drink in our hand throughout this show and every single show. Right off the jump before we get into this big one. Big, big shout out to our boy, Ken. Yes. We'll get into why, but that is who procured us number six. And uh, I know he said he was going to have his daughter stay up a little bit to watch live. So let's just give her her quick shout out. This show would be better with less F words. Sorry, Maddie, we're still going to fucking cuss. <laughs> um, backstory behind that, too. Whenever I go over and hang out with him and we share a few whiskeys uh, up, up up in uh, Hartford County yep. and have a cigar. She anxiously sits around us waiting for me to slip up. So she nice. goes, oh, oh. <laughs> brilliant. So, That's Mr. Good. Graham, what are we drinking tonight? Uh, absolutely. We have number six on Whiskey Advocates Top 20 of 2023. Uh, and this is the Maker's Mark Cellar Age 2023. It clocks in at 57.85% by volume. That'd be 115.7. How do you like that math? Quick math. Hashtag quick math. Well done. If we had um, a full bottle of it, we'd be able to read that. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Couldn't. Had to just yeah. do it. Uh, should have ran about 150 when it was available in March. Uh-huh. <laughs> and after that, we couldn't get any. Um, but Ken came through for us, obviously, which Sam has already alluded to. Uh, your blurb comes from David Fleming and Whiskey Advocates panel rated this a 94. This year came the moment Maker's Mark fans have all been waiting for, the release of an ultra-aged Maker's Expression. The extra maturation was done in a uh, specially built limestone cellar to guard against Kentucky's summer heat. The result is a dram of your dreams, beautifully integrated flavors of cocoa powder, cinnamon, cola, black cherry pudding, vanilla, and delicate spice, followed by a long finish delivering more of the same. It's smooth and irresistibly drinkable, even at this powerful proof. 
the makers faithful will be delighted to know there's more coming as this will now be an annual release. Cinnamon, yes. Uh, baking spice, yes, on the end. Black cherry, yes. Um, I don't get a ton of chocolate off of it, like mm. cocoa powder. Uh, cola, yeah, but cherry and baking spice tends to taste like cola. Cola, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's a, <laughs> and the finish is pretty decent. Um, got a little heat to it, but it yeah. dissipates quickly. It lets you know it's there, um, but it definitely calms down and all the flavor comes through uh, I'd, remarkably I'd say this well. this was a bottle and bond at an even hundred. I would not say it was 115. Mm -mm. I would certainly wouldn't say that. Uh, it is bloody fucking exceptional. It is a fantastic glass of whiskey. Yeah. And there is no fucking reason this bottle should be on this fucking list. Yep. Correct. <clears throat> obviously by taste and stature and everything it should be on it, 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 like, it should be on any list right but the point of this list is to be accessible whiskeys and we are lucky that we have relationships we are very we have, lucky or we have friends that have relationships or we have stores like your store all of you who was smart enough when they got this bottle did not sell it right away they put it in the back and they held on to it because honestly this is like trying to find a fucking pappy. Yeah, it's, you know? a, it's a unicorn, man. It's and, a fucking unicorn. And, and unicorn shouldn't be on this list. To your point, it's supposed to be accessible right. to get people into whiskey. The other problem we had with this list this year was the expensive uh, nature oh, yeah. of this list. So you're trying Should to get people. A buck you're trying to get people into whiskey. You want people to enjoy whiskey, and 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 it's a community. There's right. how many groups about whiskey? Yeah. To only have, you know, $100, $100 plus bottles on a list right. and your five marks you can't find but once a year. It's like, I, come on. With scotch, I get because they're going to probably be about a buck fifty. I get that. I'm just saying. Of, but, but on the American whiskey side, there's plenty of other things you could have put on. And especially when we do the next two that we do are also going to be harder to find American whiskeys, but not impossible to find right. American whiskeys. This was impossible to find. Like, Ex this unless you're us, because we're that good. Yeah. As when we this say list all the came time. out, we honestly, we were like, well, let's start figuring out how we're going to find tasters. Like, let's right. figure out, let's figure Which this we out. Which we have, we have a network of people that we use for that as well. Right. And, and, and Ken helps with a lot of that on the taster side of things. But, Justin does too. Yeah. <clears throat> Same but, thing. Yeah. There's been stuff before where it's just not on the list and you can only get it down in Kentucky and. Justin got us a bottle. Yep. He came up and got us a bottle. Your boy Todd's gotten mm -hmm. us stuff down there a few times. <laughs> it's just across the border. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. So I can say the following. This is an exceptional fucking glass of whiskey. It truly is. It is absolutely fucking exceptional. If you could find a bottle of it, I'd say buy it. It's worth every fucking yeah, penny. It definitely is. If you see it on a back bar at a good whiskey bar, Spend the $75 for a one ounce dram and try it. You should try this whiskey. It's beautiful. This is Makers is a weeder, much like the Pappies are a weeders. Mm -hmm. And weeders get really good with age. Yeah, yeah. They and do. this is. I'm annoyed they didn't tell us how old it was. Um, 11 year old and 12 year old juice. Oh, is it? Okay. Blended yeah. 11 and 12 year old. Mm -hmm. Nice. It was like. 13% 11 year old juice and the rest, the other 87 was nice. a 12 year old juice. All right. Yeah, it again says it all on the label, which I would love wish to. I had. <laughs> right. Um, you want to know what's interesting too? A little side it? note. Yeah. A little full circle side note, Mel. Limestone in the paranormal world is a great conduit for spirit energy. Okay. Tour company, downtown Annapolis. Drunk Mel, almost impaling herself and becoming a ghost. We could drink this and talk to her again, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Limestone cellar. <clears throat> It was, it was a good try. Thanks. Good try, Graham. It really was. It was, you, you it was to get far fetched. There. Yeah, you you worked on it. It was you know. It, Had to do you, two laps to get there is the problem. Processing yeah, it as you it were wasn't doing fast the joke, enough. You know, just it's <laughs> not bad. You know, they don't all land. They it's don't all right. Land. It's okay. No, they don't because they're ghosts. They don't have feet. <clears throat> right. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah, see, see that's recovery. quicker. That's the point. Yeah. All right. What yeah. else do we got to do, Mister? Always Graham? remember to drink responsibly. Again, uh, thank you very much, Ken, for pulling this off, and. um he has said that he will be bringing the last little bit of the bottle to the whiskey party. Nice. So um, the Patreon people will have the opportunity to try a little bit of it. But when I say a little bit of it, honestly, everybody, I mean a little bit. Try to make this sure. This is one that won't something. be on the table. He'll be holding the bottle himself. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Precisely. To, uh, to help give samples. Out. All right. 
Let's go ahead and get into it. Abbreviated week. Uh, I want to go ahead and give this preface right off the bat. We know a lot has happened with the profitability and sustainability situation. Uh, there is now rumor that wolves are about to be charged. Obviously, Forrest got their deduction today. Everton still has another hearing coming up. We are not discussing any of that this week other than in one context for Luton a little bit later. We're going to save that all till next week. It's an international break. We're going to need something to talk about. We're going to talk about that the whole damn time. What I want to go ahead and open with is it was a very eventful week for Luton. Uh, the Hatters had a week of ups, downs, and well end after today. Who really fucking knows? Yeah. <laughs> Bournemouth 4, Luton 3, Luton 1, Forest 1. Great start. Amazing first half for Luton. They're doing everything right. And then it all went to shit. Yeah, it, it really did. I mean, as as well as Cheech performed on her stroll on the way back to the car, Chong was all by himself in the six-yard box, <laughs> yeah, wasn't he? he? Was. Hey, well hashtag said. witty. Okay. Uh, she's too focused on that now. <laughs> She's already toned us out. Look at her. She's already toned us out. She's not even listening. <laughs> Jesus. That was good. Um, how was he so alone? What yeah, happened? I mean, completely. Why do uh, I, it, why do just completely alone? I mean, honestly, it, the Bournemouth defense was like a, a bad a bad parent at the mall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just completely lost their kid. Yeah, just let the kid walk away. Yeah, he's just doing what he wants. Just a, a lovely old stroll. It'll be the easiest goal he'll ever score. Um, but it was a good cross, though, uh, to pick him out. He didn't have to change his run, didn't have to break stride. It was it was excellent. Um, Kaminsky obviously saved well a few times to keep uh, Luton's advantage. Um, and Ogbené doubled their lead on 31 minutes uh, after some decent play from Luton, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, knocked around pretty well around midfield, found the gap, and just exploited it. Yep. Um, but then, as you say... Well, uh, well, and then Ross Barkley, Ross Barkley with yeah. a thunderstrike. It was a thunderbolt. Uh, good, good counterattack that. Uh, and Ross Barkley was on it from the jump when mm -hmm. it, it was, you know, uh, it was kind of his um, both games, really. If, if you want to talk about him in context, both games were Ross Barkley centric. Mm -hmm. He was excellent uh, across the whole week oh, for them. Yeah. And then next thing you know, Bournemouth, something. Uh, Ariola gave one hell of a team talk because that team got their shit together in the second half. Yeah, no, they did. Uh, but Solanke got it off, got it off with a, a fine piece of strength and skill and and everything else. But I had the same thought about the the Foot Clan watching the Ninja Turtles back in the day. They've only got four, mm -hmm. right? Solanke's only one guy. He was surrounded by three within about six feet. Mm -hmm. You don't have to attack one at a time, right? To use your advantage. Yeah, attack them all at once. Yeah, they're all just standing there waiting for that guy to get beat so they can jump in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like it just reminded me of like bad superhero cartoons mm -hmm. and movies where the you know, they're terribly outnumbered by the villains and they just stood there waiting for their turn to get their ass kicked. It's like every roadhouse style absolutely. movie, like Patrick Swayze getting ready to fight somebody yeah. there's five guys they each come on one at a time. Wop boom, yeah. this guy, wop boom, so next guy, wop boom, boom. Absolutely <laughs> fucking ridiculous. <laughs> But yeah, so they did that, and uh, Solanke did well to to beat the defender he had. He was, you know, not favorite to to get mm -hmm. on the end of that ball, and then scored, obviously. But yeah, Golmau scramble, uh, Zabarini uh, did his thing. Um, yeah, ball over the line. It, it looked like barely it barely over the line. Right. I mean, it was close. I think the uh, the Luton defender probably should have left the first one for Kaminsky. He was mm -hmm. kind of in the way, to be honest. Kaminsky looked like he had it covered. Uh, but that's what popped it back into play and allowed the, the second header to come in. Well, and as that second goal happened, you could just see Luton kind of really shrink into itself. You could feel the oh, tension yeah. like big time. And it only took of, two. It only took two minutes. Right. Instead of them trying to really kind of go for it, just uh -huh. they in at that point, you're just like, oh, shit, they're going to bottle this one. Well, yeah. And it only took two minutes for Semenya to get his goal to, to equalize. Um, so it was, you know. It was it was very quick, and you saw that those shoulders drop, and them, as you say, collapsing amongst themselves yep. to try to defend that lead. And then, the, but that's not your game plan. It's not how you're set up. It's not right. your system. That's not who you are. And it was very easy to exploit space and to and to get around that at that point. And yep. uh, and Semenyo did, and then he got another one, uh, obviously, um, later on. Yep. And that that kind of put that that did but, it. But Carlton Morris and and uh, uh, Barkley should have scored kind of each and together. Oh yeah. Well, Neto had himself a very good match. He did have a good game He as did well. not have a very good game against Sheffield uh, the week prior. Yeah. Now, the thing that happens here, though, is Luton then have to have a quick memory, man. Got to be a goldfish. You got to forget about this shit because yeah. 
you now have the team that is directly in front of you in the table in your building that weekend. And Kenilworth was bumping. Absolutely oh was. They God. were right behind the team, as they should be. And the Hatters came out swinging. Now, ironically, they wouldn't be the first team to score. But at first, like you said, Ross Barkley was on the ball he was ready to yeah. have a day it was his week i mean i think he had four <laughs> shots in the first 15 minutes mm-hmm. it's like three of them were on target but as the half went on you know, fucking forest took over and in, yeah, they threatened a couple times yeah. but kaminsky did well it was nothing really clear cut right. um that that forest had but uh now there was one very special goal line clearance mm-hmm. um from a divac Origi shot that, yes that was stopped but Chris Wood, yeah, uses everything but that big meaty forehead <laughs> to get that ball <laughs> to, in the to back get of that the ball net. in the back of the net. Yeah. Every inch of his six foot three frame, uh, and and his studs to to get that ball in the back of the net. And um, but it it was it was a good cross. It was and a good goal, good run. My observation is after that happened, you saw it again. Mm-hmm. You saw Lute, like Luton starting to feel the pressure of where they are and everything, and. They've also, I think they're very aware, and we'll get onto it here in a moment, of how the rest of the season looks for them, Yeah. right? And they knew this is one they needed. And really, the bulk of the second half, Forrest did everything they should. They really did. I mean, they gave it away at the death. And it took... Yeah, but Man- Mangy had a goal disallowed. <clears throat> right. Um, Which, kind of the same thing happened in West Ham, which we'll come on to mm-hmm. later. I think it's a bit unfortunate. I understand how the rules written. And it's what the handball, but it's ball not rule intentional. Is. And a lot like um, actually two of West Ham's goals, the arm was still tucked in. Yeah, it's like what are you meant to do with it? Right. Where am I supposed to put this? Right, right. Like, I'm not making myself bigger. Right. And if it was a defender and that had happened, it wouldn't have been. It's called not a handball. handball. It's not right. a penalty. So why are you taking the goal away? Right. I, I'll say it. I've said it a thousand times. I'll say it again. Goals are the best bit. Yep. Why are, are we doing everything we can? Why are we bit. doing everything we can to take yep. away goals? Yep. I fucking hate that. Despite his goal being disallowed, he had another brilliant goal line clearance mm-hmm. as well uh, to keep Luton in the game, and that obviously proved crucial because Luke Barry in the 89th minute. Yep. Well done. Yep. But before that, would it surprise you to hear that it was off a set piece? Oh, yeah. Luton might be good at set pieces, but everybody. What a fucking glancing header that was to mm-hmm. get it to that far post. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is the epitome <clears throat> of a flick. A yep. deft little flick took literally the entire Forest team out of play um, and set up a fairly easy finish for Luke Barry. Yeah, the only thing Forrest didn't do right in the nope, second half was, not put right. him, was put him away. <laughs> that's Sorry. the wrong game, Okay, I think. Yeah, because Luke Barry was a set piece that came in from the front, and he swept it. Oh. He turned on a dime and shot it with his left foot. That was Luke Barry's finish. It was uh, that was excellent. Wood- Woodard, it was Woodard in the who other came game. on in, yeah. who, in this one. Yeah, yeah. So, anywho, the <laughs> game ends. They get the draw. They are now three points uh, behind Forest until this morning, when we come to find out that Luton. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Forest under the financial and sustainability mm-hmm. uh, violation has been docked four points. Again, we will get into all of that on Monday. show. All the details show. next Monday, yeah. But even with that, Luton's schedule is not easy the rest of the way. They have the hands down the hardest opponent schedule the rest of the way, and a lot of them aren't at Kenilworth. And I think they're only two points clear for us. Is that right? One only point. one point clear mm-hmm. for us, yeah. Because they, they were three behind, and then the four-point deduction puts them one ahead. Right. And I... You're out of the zone, right? Which is where you need to be. But in the same regards, remember when Everton got their 10 points? They won four in a row. You made that up <laughs> like, in a few weeks. Right, yeah. because they got fired up about it and it, it galvanized them. You have to imagine this will do the same to Forrest as well. And frankly, Forrest has an easier schedule the rest of the way. And Forrest <laughs> is getting a little healthier. Yeah. So it's I, uh, my personal opinion the Hatters are a great story. Everybody wants to see them survive this season. Yeah, I th- for sure. I think for me personally, they fell out of the league on Wednesday. That, that loss is going to be too much to come back from. Well, the the worst part is, is, and we've said this about Sheffield United, you know, a lot lately. We said this about, to an extent about Burnley, not as, not as much, but uh, because they do still try, they just suck. 
Um, but Luton are giving it an honest fucking go, mm-hmm. you know, and that you want to see that. We said this about Norwich in the past a few times. Those of you that have been longtime listeners to the show, when when you pack it in and give up, we, we're kind of over it. Yeah, you know. But Luton haven't done that. They've been a credit to themselves, and they've been trying to do the best they can. They haven't come and, and just been, you know, fucking low block. We're going to defend our way through this and, and finish. And t- they're playing their way. And they're they're losing games four to three. Right. They're they're rescuing points at the death. They're they're trying to entertain their fans. And it's just sad that we probably are going to lose them at and the end of the season. As uh, one of the members, and forgive me for not remembering who you were specifically, but someone in the group had said, while the four to three is exciting, this looks exactly like the team that's about to go down. Yeah. We move our attention to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup that saw some amazing matches, but still sees three of the big six going to Wembley. Coventry three, Wolves two, Manchester City two, Newcastle nil, Chelsea four, Leicester two, Manchester United four, Liverpool three. Coventry actually dominated the bulk of the match against the Wolves. I said Coventry should have been up 6 0 at halftime. I mean, they but were Jose really... Sal had himself a hell of a game. Mm-hmm. Jose Sal was excellent uh, in this game multiple times over. It surprisingly was 0 0 at halftime. Right. Uh, but Ellis Sims gets a goal, uh, really, uh, as we've said, was a long time coming. Yeah. Um, but there was a five minute spell uh, shortly after that where Wolves just let their quality show. Not shortly, yeah. that was about 20 minutes later, right. but. Where Wolves just let their quality show finally. Hey, fuck, we're, we're the Premier League team here. Right. And they, they just hit them, bang, bang, just sucker punch. Yep, couple of goals, and then eight in the Nuri, 86 uh, minute. Yeah, eight Nuri and Bueno. Coventry's going, oh, shit, we're down. Yeah. We're down. Gary O'Neill's thinking, hey, this is Bueno right now. <clears throat> 90th minute, unless Tim scores again, makes it 2-2. Two to two. No Bueno. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will say there was a little bit of controversy in this match before we get to the, the game winner was on the first goal, Ellis Sims with a potential handball. I do think VAR, VAR got it right in the following sense. There was not a good enough angle to be able to, to overturn it, right? It has to be clear and obvious. So, so, there was, so it's just, it's just again, Arsenal and Wolves get, get fucked, huh? I would, uh, also, I would also say, you know, it's that in the West Ham one, I don't, I didn't think it was clear and obvious to overturn that one. I did. Yeah. And so it you just, can see his arm move yeah, towards it. Just a little, you know, it's, but I think they got it right personally. And then of course there was also the, uh, the kick to the face that, um, I, some people are like, Oh, you kicked him in the head. It was like, this was exactly like the McAllister situation. The guy threw his head right at where the guy was kicking it. Yeah. He was looking for the foul. And he barely got him bare. Like there was a little nick on his nose and a little yep. bit of blood. And, and it just felt like they was looking for that foul Trying to find a, a right. reason to give a red. <laughs> so I yep. think VAR got that right as well, but we get 10 extra minutes added on. And when you know it in the 90th plus 10th minute, what the fuck happens? Oh yeah. How's you right? just found the corner with such a beautiful shot and, and hurried as well. I mean, wolves were trying to close him down. He, he had some pressure on him. Mm-hmm. He almost didn't get the shot off and he found that far corner. Jose saw it full stretch again, almost got a, a fingertip to it, but just, just couldn't reach it. And it was, it was fucking scenes, man. It was, it was that brilliant. perfect wide curve that it looks like it's going wide, but as you can tell, it's almost like it bent around. Oh, saw. Yeah. And then turned in and barely nuestled itself right inside the post. It was, it was just, it was just sexy. perfectly hit ball, and then everybody losing their mind. Of course, because that's what the FA Cup's about. I mean, it was it was incredible. It's absolutely incredible. That's, that's and the point of it. Championship side Coventry City is finding themselves going to Wembley in the semifinals. And of then the FA soon Cup. to be Championship side Manchester United is who they'll face. <laughs> yeah, precisely. <laughs> um, honestly, JK, JK. The, uh, this one we keep very short and sweet. Uh, uh, sorry. Sure, Billy, there's just not a lot to really talk about. City were clinical. You know, Silva scored the exact same way both fucking times. Yeah, deflections. Yeah. It's bullshit. But, but also in the box, how he scored them, like how he got open, how he got himself to the shot. Like, yeah, just... I mean, Newcastle obviously have their injury issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alexander Izak had a great chance. Stefan Ortega did make a very good save. 
um, uh, from that shot. He was only about eight yards out, got a good, strong left hand to it, and cleared it uh, out of the six, actually, with that touch as well, um, which was pretty good. But other than that, we watched a city uh, possession drill that they do at training. Mm -hmm. And then Gerardo Silva had two deflected shots, and uh, I wanted to claw my eyes out. And And I only watched the 10-minute highlight package. And the key thing I would say with with that match, honestly, for Newcastle is now – if you're following the Manchester City model, you were supposed to win a cup this year. You were supposed to win something like a domestic cup. You didn't. Right? They also haven't bought like City <clears throat> bought back in the day. True. Very true. Uh, but now you are at the point where right now you're on the outside looking in of Europe. You need to get into Europe. There, if you want to keep spending money, you need to get into Europe. They are at the point where somebody should be punching a horse. <laughs> <laughs> because everybody's getting angry and defensive. <laughs> and I like it. <laughs> what, just what you expect from your Jordies, right? Punch a police horse, or 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 punch each other, punch a teammate, <laughs> yeah. or punch a horse. Yeah, or just you know, go get yourself a twelve pound all you can eat kind pasta, of pasta buffet. Kind of same thing. We're gonna kind of keep this one short and sweet, even though there were a lot of goals to be had and some interesting storylines. Uh, Chelsea go up and then give up probably the ugliest, stupidest own goal I think anyone's ever seen in their lives. That was brilliant. <laughs> that was brilliant. But I, I do want to mention how Kukurea was the uh, second toddler loss this weekend at the mall. Yeah. And he was fucking all alone. Yeah. Now, how they he's got that? big old bushy hair. How do you <laughs> how miss, that, miss kid? that? Yeah. He almost he's blocked himself l- from seeing it. It came he, in front of his face. Got so locks, he's got locks that put you to shame, man. Oh, bad. Yeah, yeah, no. I look like a crackhead compared to him. <laughs> no, he's brilliant. Um, maybe not in the face, the- but in the hair situation yeah definitely what was you so remember when he got yanked down in the box by mm-hmm. his hair yep. that was yeah it's a he should probably put that up what was so brilliant about the own goal that chelsea gave up it was one of those ones where it happened so slowly and you're just watching the oh, ball you can see the whole thing bouncing into yeah. the net and you just see the keeper oh. just isn't even moving because the keeper knows even if i try to run and get it Ain't well, Robert it. Sanchez shouldn't have been where he yeah. was in the first place. Yeah, I don't know just where like, he just, it's like he just stopped walking. And the defenders just, and they're all just looking at it, just going, well, that's going to go into the net have you, uh, eventually. Yeah, go. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen anybody play Fortnite mm-hmm. and like go up to a non-playable character and they just are continually just kind of strolling around, mm-hmm. right? And you could buy things off them or whatever. Robert Sanchez looked like that. <laughs> like DeSassi had taken three or four touches back towards his own goal, and Sanchez is just still wandering out of the box. <laughs> He's walking like, away. Where is he going? What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? And DeSassi wasn't even under that much pressure and just absolutely launches this ball skyward. If it was on the ground, he didn't hit it very well. But if it was on the ground, Sanchez probably could have caught up to it because of the friction of the ground. Yep. But the fact that he 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 ended up underneath of it, it let it continue its momentum just that much more. And Sanchez couldn't get there. It's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. So Chelsea gives up their lead. <laughs> the Foxes get a red card. And then Chelsea scores two more and wins. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like the weirdest kind of I know. ebb and flow to this match. Well, so I, what do you think? Uh there was a a red in this one, wasn't it? Yes, yes, there was. What do you first off? I had to find four different highlight streams because ESPNs didn't show the fucking red card really? for some reason. Wow. I don't know if it's because my YouTube cut to an ad and I could have rewinded it, but the video did not go back to where I left the video. Mm-hmm. I came back to, oh, it's a red card. And I didn't know what happened. Hmm. I, so I had to go find it. So I finally saw it. It's I was going to say, obviously I definitely a red. saw it, but I was watching it in real time while also watching the Villa West Ham yeah. game. So I didn't, I saw it, but I didn't see it kind of but thing. It was absolutely a red card, oh, obviously. Yeah. Um, you, you, no question about that. Um, but uh, before that, I, I thought Mavadidi was great. And if you were a Chelsea defender, besides DeSassi, uh, Mavadidi had, you know, feet like Houdini. Mm-hmm. He just made everybody fucking miss. They just <laughs> didn't know what they were doing all at sixes and sevens and a good finish. Um, Sanchez at full stretch couldn't get there again. Mm-hmm. But then you have the Chelsea supporters, right? They're, it's tied 2-2 now, I think, in it. And he subs off Mudrik. And then the booze rang down from the stands. Well, Chukomeka, who he brought on for Mudrik, mm-hmm. ends up scoring the, the go-ahead goal, the right. winner. Yeah, and then you have Metaweke, who came on for no uh, Chukomeka uh, came on for Raheem Sterling, I think, mm-hmm. and then Metaweke, <laughs> who came on later, out of the insurance goal. That was a hell of a rip. That was a fucking great oh, shot. Oh, that was a shot. But then everybody's 
now we're clapping again. So it's like you criticize the manager, but the decisions he made won you the game. But the, it was very strange. The whole thing was very strange. I, I'm so glad I'm not a Chelsea supporter. So honestly, here for the, the, the final thought with Chelsea is it's really it's the I can't make that show title. Mm-hmm. What? I'm so glad I'm not a Chelsea supporter. <laughs> it's just so confusing. I don't know who to root the, for. The match was confusing. It way, was just a weird match. Taylor says a Fortnite reference. Who let Mez Oil in their studio? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Walked right into that one, killer. The. Uh, the the thing for me is now for Chelsea, it all they have to win this FA Cup, and if they don't win this FA Cup and they don't get into Europe, frankly, they're in trouble with their finances as well. Now I'm sure the FA will figure out a way to make sure that they'll be a okay because that's how they roll. I'm saving that for next week. Rant for next week. Rant for next week. <laughs> but <clears throat> they pull. They do pull City, and you're like, okay, well, you know. City should probably win. Uh, not so fast. Fucking, they've had multiple score draws with them this season. So oh, yeah, remember Ederson's out of for a few weeks. It's going to depend on when that game falls. I'm not sure the dates of the uh, of the semis. But uh, finally, what the one we really need to talk about, quite frankly, it is of course uh, Manchester United Liverpool. This for the neutral was absolutely fantastic. This is a classic cup match. This is a classic Northwest Derby. Yeah. This was a fucking ding dong. Fucking perfect. This was back and oh fucking forth God. the whole time. I uh, pulled a, uh, just one stat that tells you everything you need to know. 53 shot attempts between them. Dead even at 11 shots on target for both teams. Wow. Wow. And, and of course, United go up early. Although it looked like Liverpool was really getting the chances. And then Scott McTominay steals in after mm-hmm. a, a good save from Kelleher, but mm-hmm. he put it back into the danger area. Um, and McTominay just reacted first. It was just, uh, you know, the McTerminator strikes again. And right before the end of half, you think it looks like United's going to go in fine. No, it's 1 1. Oh, no, sorry. Um, it's 2 1. It's 2 1. Like, and then, like and, that. <laughs> and then, and Mo Salah's goal, mm-hmm. there was a stretch of time where he couldn't connect a pass. Yeah. Then all of a sudden he turns it on, bang, goal. It's goal, like back oh, on the net. We're nice. Uh, and you get into the second half and uh and and Anthony ties it up and just like you're like, all right, and then Liverpool. Well, Anthony, oh, I, I do want to mention mm-hmm. second goal in all competitions this year. Mm-hmm. Also his second goal in the FA Cup this year. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking what a time oh. to get it. He scores, Liverpool goes up again. I mean, this this thing was just it was it was batshit. It was absolute batshit. Marcus Rashford missed a golden opportunity to win it uh, mm-hmm. at full time as well. Just put a relatively easy chance. I just let yep. the occasion get to him or the pressure get to him, whatever it was, and just dragged his shot wide. And then into extra That's time. And then here we go. We're in extra time. And then all hell breaks loose, right? Mm-hmm. Things are a little chippy here or there, but it's Northwest Derby. That's what you should expect. But Harvey Elliott sc- uh, scored just on the stroke of halftime mm-hmm. in extra time. Rashford makes up for his previous miss, equalizes seven minutes after the restart. Um, but then here we go with Ahmad Diallo. He ended up scoring the winner. And I get it. You're young. This is your first Derby goal. It's a huge goal. It's really important. But you got to know you're on a yellow card, man. <laughs> yeah. there's Because pro- there's going to be time added for the celebration. <laughs> for the two goals that have been scored in extra mm-hmm. time already. Takes his shirt off and he's running. And it wasn't even like a good one. Rip it off, throw it in the crowd, do your big flexes. No, he just wanted everybody to turn around and look at his name. Look at my name. Well, if I just fucking do what Ronaldo does, just turn around. Just turn around. Nah, second yellow, sent off for taking his shirt off. And uh, Manchester United have to play. And now he misses the semifinal. Yep. Guaranteed. Um, what a dumb fucking move! As a kid, I get it. He's young, still. But it's like, come on, man! You gotta be, you gotta be aware. I, you already have a yellow card. Imagine I did. the shit he had to eat in the locker room later. Uh they didn't care. He scored the game winner. Also, I did like when he got the second yellow and he's walking off, rips off the shirt, just tosses it to somebody <laughs> yeah. as he's walking in. I'm yeah. like, all right, at least you did that one, kid. Good it's job. Just like, and for a lame shirt off celebration too. <laughs> yeah. It's like, come on, uh, at least do something cool. But uh, no, nah, so th- that's a shame. Obviously, he'll miss the semifinal, which after this, I'm sure he would have probably played, uh, at, at least in, in some capacity. Um, but and they're playing Coventry as well. I mean, I guess you'd like to think, 
Well, domestic bands, he might actually j- just be named on the bench and serve the, the band in the, in regular, the Premier League. In maybe. the Premier League, yeah. Could be. Yeah, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I, oh, I just, what are you doing? Uh, I, what did uh, you do that for? <laughs> I, I think um, uh, Shore Billy put it out perfectly when he put up the post that it was going to be. Now, I have um, a contention with okay. this. You go ahead. That um, Manchester United will barely beat Coventry 1 0. Um, City will uh, demolish uh, Chelsea, and then United will beat um, City. Everybody will proclaim that Ten Hag is the greatest coach ever. They'll win a trophy, and then he'll promptly get fired a week later. Yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> absolutely, hundred percent. Oh yeah, that's you're not wrong. So here's here's the problem I have with Shore Billy's commentary on this, uh-huh. and he had the Senator Palpatine Kermit the Frog meme, which I fucking love. That meme. <laughs> yes. It's one of my favorite memes because that also actually applies to Daydrink Mel. <laughs> um, because the original time I saw that meme was, oh, I can't drink tonight. I got to get up early. And the Senator Palpatine said, take six shots. Six shots ruin everything. <laughs> <laughs> Were the speech bubbles, which yep. I find funny. Here's my here's my issue with what happened here. And I'm going to just read it to you. Me and the rest of the league watching uh, Manure versus Pool. Yes, yes. Extra time. Let the exhaustion flow. Run yourselves to death. So we have the Senator Palpatine character mm-hmm. makes his first um, first appearance. Then we have top four want pool to lose. Rest of league want a maneuver to lose. Both teams trying to tell world how good they are and how much it means. Um, wait, how, did he edit this? There was a portion of this that looked like Yoda. I think he edited this maybe. All right. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So he wrote it in three different character voices, but it's all one paragraph. Heard. That annoyed me. Okay. Right, <laughs> Do, well, better. Do better. Do uh, better. <laughs> hey, United, still a bunch of fucking frauds. No, they're back, man. Rounding out the rest of the league. And oh, so that happened. Burnley 2, Brentford 1, Fulham 3, Tottenham 0, Villa 1, West Ham 1. Uh, Burnley and Brentford was very interesting because in the first five minutes, there was a red card penalty. Burnley's up one nothing. Uh, Brentford's down to 10 men. Well, the the worst part about this is this game had Brentford get your confidence back written all over it. Brian and Bremo's back on the bench for the first mm-hmm. time in a couple of months. Yet all, all of the ingredients were there for mm-hmm. you to start to, to get yourself going again. And Sergio Reguilon just fucked it. <laughs> Absolutely fucked it. Insider information, continuing with the trend that uh, Brett has done stuff. Um, I have gotten it on good um, information <laughs> that Brett was actually working on tackling drills with uh, with Regulon before the match. So clearly he, you know, influenced him to push him over there. I don't know what that, what, what? Are, <clears throat> why'd you push him? Just let him go. Let him have the hit. <laughs> like, especially because with that push, it's clear you're denying a goal scoring opportunity. Right. It's, it's not. Clear, like, it's not. You take double jeopardy like, out of the equation. You're, you're not you're, going for the ball, and you know the eye in the sky is going to look like mm-hmm. what? Like what is going through your brain? What's going it's through your brain? So, it's just so boneheaded. And then even from there, you know, Burnley it took them forever to get a second goal. Well, and, Fafana, yeah. how many goals should Fafana have had? It, it just. It, it's this. They don't seem to have the instinct to just get it in the fucking it's net. Ridiculous. He finally did get his goal. On a chance that was harder than the two that he missed. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I don't know what that was about, but also carbon copy of that miss, uh, the the one in the six yard box with the right footed effort. Mm-hmm. Uh, carbon copy of that happened uh, in Spurs with Timo Werner, oh. <laughs> which was awesome. Bees finally score a goal. I do have to say, I don't know if that goal should have been disallowed. I think that was a 50 50 ball, and I don't. Think Tony well, Ivan Tony's at the end. I think Ivan Tony was just going for the ball. Nah. His arm he elbowed him in the face. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. And then he kicked him in the face. No, it looked like his hand was going across nah. his arm, but it yeah, looked but like he still, was jumping in the air to go for a header. Nah, I don't. It he just looked at him. Oh, thanks. I actually for once you were defending the goalie. For once I'm defending the goalie okay, here. Fair and enough. Merkic had himself a hell of a fucking game. Now I would he say, played very well as well. I would also say the following. Um, Bees are in a bad, bad yep. way now. They are right yep. in the thick of it. And uh, and uh, Timmy Howard made the reference about uh, Lester of last year. It's like you look at this roster. It's loaded with players and you think they're going to be OK and you think they're going to be able to stay awake. But they can't because they yawn because they have too many kids. And 
What ends up happening? They end up being the team that goes down, and Brentford could find themselves in that situation. You like how I seamlessly worked in that little knock at you for your fucking yawning during the show, right? Yeah. But they, I didn't hear it, to be That's honest. why I drive the bus. But they, pro- they probably won't go down because of <laughs> either, either point deductions or other teams being shit, or how many more reasons can they not go down? All right. Fair, <laughs> fair enough. Complete domination by the Cottagers. I mean, that's the only way to put it. Fulham completely dominated Spurs. Vicario was the only Spurs player that earned his fucking wages that day. Mm-hmm. I mean, Timo Werner was about six inches out from goal. Goes left-footed like uh, David Fafana should have, uh, but still managed to put it wide somehow. Not sure how it just skims off his boot like that. That was the chance I was referring while we were talking about uh, referencing while we were talking about the last game. Um I have an interesting take. I I wonder if Son, um, you know, he was kind of carrying a little injury when he came back from the Asian Cup. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's just because they were in such a bad run. He came back early and he's because he does not look himself. No, he does not. He does not. You're absolutely right. He's not even hitting the target on chances that he'd be burying a season ago. Sure. Even earlier this season, I'm sorry. Sure, Billy said, fucker cost me fantasy week, made him the captain. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shame. Never, uh, as you'll find out in the betting segment coming up, never put your money on Spurs. <laughs> but always back your local podcast host. Yeah. The, um, yeah, but there were, I mean, Fulham were excellent. Yeah. They were excellent. Played phenomenal. They're, Alex Absolutely Awo- phenomenal. Alex Awobi was excellent. I, I always love, because it makes the defenders look so fucking ridiculous. I love when a player, like, fakes just a, a very simple outside of the boot cut, mm-hmm. right? And, but it, they fake it and just let the ball run straight. He made t- two, full, or, uh, two Spurs defenders fall <laughs> by doing that yep. and just cruise straight into the penalty box. It was fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite things. Uh, it, it Spurs, it's again and again and again, they fucking figure out a way to kind of fuck it off, man. Yeah. They, they're they healthy. Everyone's back. This is the opportunity to move into fucking and fourth Manny's place. And continuing to score. Seventh goal in seven games as mm-hmm. well. I yep. mean, it's huge. The, the first one was excellent. The second one was brave. Um, it, You know, just hope he d- didn't pick up some sort of contusion or, or something that might keep him out for a game or two. He was excellent. And Lukic, I love also very unorthodox, like when goals are scored with unorthodox body parts. Mm-hmm. And uh, just the invention to just throw his knee up at it. You know, it was very well done. Mm-hmm. It was all around is very well done. And Paulinho was excellent as usual. Yep. And then there's the opportunity for uh, Villa to go ahead and stretch their lead. They're only able to manage to stretch it to one because David Moyes going to David Moyes and the Irons are going to frustrate the fuck out of you. I mean, honestly, and that is exactly what it was the entire game until they finally put in the equalizer. Villa did get lucky with the, the handball calls. Mm hmm. Whoa, whoa, get- whoa, 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 whoa. There's no luck in that. They handballed it. I agree that there's only one decision the referee can make, but I think it's a shit rule. It literally rolled down his arm and went in. Like, hit every single part. So you want to argue shoulder? That- hit it. Elbow? Hit it. Forearm? Hit it. For Suchek, yes, agreed, but not for Mikel Antonio. That goal but- should have stood. It, but that's who hit it last before it went in. No, I know the way the them. law is written. Yeah. But it's a shit law. Uh, and it's, What's he meant to do with his arm? He can't make it disappear. It was tucked into his body. Yep. It wasn't. It was ahead of his body. No, that was the Suchet goal. Mm. I'm talking about Antonio, the first one that was ruled out. Yeah, the first one. His, his he has no place to put his arm. He has no place to put his arm. And if it was a defender, it would be considered not a handball. Correct. But, if it's but an for attacker, an attacker, it is a handball. handball. It's bullshit. I, I have yeah. no problem with these handball rules. I never have. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure. Um, <laughs> but what does end up happening? They do find a way to get the point. They do hold on for the, for the draw. It was a very scrappy game. It was a ve- <sighs> well. It was exactly what West Ham does. I know. West Ham gonna ugly it but up, man. Villa bought into it again. Mm-hmm. Kudus <laughs> actually got a little mm-hmm. rough. Uh, mm-hmm. And David Louise, I'm not sure he did very well to not get sent off. I'm amazed it, he didn't get sent off. He we was were holding like expecting him. Expecting it. He was holding him. Kudos. Yeah. Kudos lashes out. Luckily, he missed uh, with that little flying yeah. elbow he did. Uh, but right before the elbow, 
David Louise lets go and does this weird like elbow pat on his shoulder. It's like he was giving him a, like a like a massage. massage or whatever. It's very funny. It was very funny. I've um, never seen that move before in my life. <laughs> but honestly, now the draw is massive because that gives you a three point lead on on Spurs, and Spurs does have a game in hand, but their game in the hand is at the bridge. Right. You know, they should beat Chelsea. But they but, never do. You know? Really? Right. Now, uh, who's who's this Zanolo? Or I'm is Zan- Zanilo. Zanolio. I've never seen him before. He's Who is the this Italian guy? player? Uh, we got him from on loan. I think from it was Italy. Roma. No, 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 no. You he you got him from loan in Turkey. I think Turkey, it was Galatasaray, but he's an Italian. But he's an Italian uh, in January? No, no, in uh, September. September. He's, he's only been seen him this whole season. He's really. been playing in Europe. That's it. Uh, he was a Europe buy. He was a Europe buy. Okay. He's uh, a but he's guy. remember when the brief nothing burger of a ga- gambling scandal came out? We're not talking about your slider again. He With was, yeah. He was one of the ones involved, and he was like, "Oh, hey, no!" In Italy, he was like, "Oh, hey, no! This is online poker. Come check my phone. I'm not gambling on games. I'm completely innocent." But it was a bunch of other Italian players. Tonali gotcha. being the most valuable, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? But uh, but we I call him Thigh Master, and I'm working very hard he to get that over. He does have nice thighs. I, they're massive. Yeah. So yeah, anytime what, someone what an compliments him, I go, Thigh Master! What an excellent toe poke. Yeah. Uh, the way he stole in there. It, was, it wasn't it was like we used to get at Soccer Dome, mm. toe pokes. This was an excellent toe poke. Yep. It was perfectly brilliant. done. But he, then the continued shithousery throughout the game, he should have been fucking sent off as well for yeah. throwing that ball away. Well, we were in the bar bullshit. watching it, and I'm going... <laughs> What are you going to do? A Brazilian and Italian are going to get mad. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. They're going to get, they're very, those are two very passionate peoples. So, like I said, Graham, here we now sit and uh, uh, Villa now finds themselves in the driver's seat of uh, for Champions League with Spurs. Oh, feeling yep. good. They do. And we'll see what happens. I think Villa will, will have enough to get over yeah. the line, um, but we will see. Sure money. We're obviously not placing any bets. We're today. not placing any bets, and thank fucking God, because <laughs> I lost again. I'm down fifteen forty seven now, um, and I am so happy uh, that we have a break. Um, so mine just says fucking Spurs, because <laughs> even though one of the games that happened prior to that, I had already lost my bet on. Spurs did it more convincingly. <laughs> right. You're blaming Spurs. Well, I imagine the one that you uh, also lost on is the same one I lost on because uh, the bees let me down with that early red card. Yep. <laughs> and I'm now down at minus $118. Big Sam's Lock of the Week. To the listening audience, did you know that 26.6666666667% of the time? It works 100% of the time. Um, I actually uh, forgot to say it on the live show, but I did talk about it on Injury Time. I had picked the Bees to beat Burnley, and I had picked uh, Villa to uh, beat West Ham, and of course, neither happened. I have uh, still better than Pat and Graham. Uh, Mr. Pat will be sending in his email next week when he does the bets. I believe he hit, so I believe he's now ahead of you. Oh, great. If you get to that 27%, uh-huh. like within like a 27.63% of the time, like if you get like close to that, <clears throat> I will bring it back to the t-shirt store. Very good. Uh, the other thing worth mentioning is uh, Kitty uh, missed on another draw. She uh, picked Fulham and Spurs to draw mm-hmm. and Fulham ended up whooping them. So she sits at 15 and 13. Is that why she's living in a different house? Uh, it could be. It could very well be, my friends. Yeah. So that is going to wrap it up, boys and girls. Mr. Graham, do you have any parting words? Yeah, there's one. Uh, Dickie Doo uh, that reared his ugly head uh, this weekend. And uh, if you watched any of the final bits of the Manchester United-Liverpool game, you'll know exactly who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's as the Liverpool players are walking off, you can see somebody doing the old wanker sign, right? Nothing Fine. wrong with that. Fine. I mean, yeah, there's hey, probably low, kids around. Hey, but, it's low brow, but whatever. Yeah, right? Okay, you're a wanker. You're doing the air jerk. That's um, fine. No and problem. wanker is a term held children use in that. Of I've, course. I've heard You've children say a lot a worse. use that word, <laughs> yeah, uh, in, in the footballing context, obviously. And... Uh, but then that guy decided to uh, fake smother himself um, 
talk about pushing, uh, demonstrated like a pushing yeah. motion, mm -hmm. and then to smother himself again as we're coming up on the anniversary of Hillsborough. Yeah. Um, you hate them more than I do in terms of your rivalries, but Hillsborough is off limits, man. Uh huh. When 96 I... people in a massive government cover up, uh, uh, rear, um, you know, kind of are perpetrated you um you don't make fun of it and for the guy to motion like they pushed each other into suffocating yeah when Blaming it was them again when which it was is what the yorkshire police did and it, what the yeah. newspapers did and when it finally got proven that none of that had happened yep. i hate liverpool with all my being everton hates liverpool liverpool hate everton on the day of the Hillsboro massacre, you all stand together. There is, there is always a child in a red shirt and a child in a blue shirt wearing a nine and a six, holding hands together. Yep, it is a tragedy. Fucking leave it alone. Talk all the shit you want. Don't be fucking bringing up race. Don't be bringing up someone's orientation. Religion. And sure as hell. Just leave it alone. Sure as hell. Don't bring up when people fucking died. Like yeah, absolutely. It's so just, it's the no flies. So those it is, that the cuntiest of cunty things absolutely to do. and for those of you that don't know um sam and i hold the belief mel actually holds the belief also uh that as long as you wake up every day with the uh intention of trying to not be a cunt uh then usually <laughs> things turn out pretty okay for you so our motto here on the show is hashtag d -back. don't be a cunt and that is the uh, d -back bear so whenever you see that bear why is that bear there he's our official mascot He's the don't be a cunt bear. Yeah. That is an excellent transition into our bonus show injury time. <laughs> <laughs> so that's coming. So just to give a, a, a great example quickly of uh, hashtag bands that are acceptable, uh -huh. right? Uh, Roma fans the other day against Brighton in Europe held up a sign said the queen gives BJs. Or right. gave B said gave, gave BJs. BJs. It was in a, a proper tense, um, which fucked up. She's dead. She was in her late nineties when she died, but you know, fine, relatively good nature, <laughs> right? No problem. Nobody, silly. Nobody. No, yeah, it's Lo silly. Low brow, but silly. Exactly. Yeah. So, in response, in the return fixture when Brighton played Roma, they held up a sign that said Francesco Totti, Italian legend, one of their greatest ever players, obviously. Uh, Francesco Totti puts pineapple on his pizza. <laughs> <laughs> That's hashtag bands. That's <laughs> okay. the best. And not, <clears throat> it's delicious. Not miming when 96 people died. Yeah. Hashtag d -back. All right. Thank you very much for joining us, boys and girls. As uh, producer Mel mentioned, next up is going to be injury time. But before that, we are going to do the EFL show where we recap the rest of English football. And we're going to be doing a live stream for that as well, which will be coming up in just a moment for everybody too. if you like to switch over and stay with us we'd love to have you and then of course injury time there's not going to be anything to preview this week because we're on international break but we'll talk about how all the fantasy teams did talk about the beers we were drinking and then we'll also talk about the spicy little meatball that was can i dare i say drama in the closed group uh today where uh yep. people didn't follow that rule the old oh, d-back rule i agree you did not follow that d-back you rule. go right ahead and continue to say that mrs houston um i know the truth of it all anyways mr graham should somebody want to find injury time how do they go about doing it very easy it's patreon.com forward slash d football show you just sign up to that one beautiful five dollar tier you get all the extra content sam just talked about and eventually you'll also get a video <laughs> that we have to film Ooh. uh so did I tell you the something. theme? What? Earth Day? Easter. Mm -hmm. Oh, Easter. we're doing Easter. Yep. Easter Bunny. Thank you, Easter Bunny. Fuck, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Do like that very commercial. Don't let it all out. <laughs> yeah. Don't but anyways. Don't let it all out the bag. Uh, and by the way, Mel, mm -hmm. that's how a good whore does it. Till next week, everybody. Good night. Born in the land of Bowie, Maryland. Bred to be a fan of fucking Everton. Put you in the eye and drink your rye. Sam Houston. Sam Houston. Arsenal fans have another Sam. Great day, yay, the fucking gooner grab. Stuff of a lord. Look straight in shorts. Sam Graham. Sam Graham. Come to United! Hit the fucking new button!